In many job interviews, you are expected to demonstrate key skills that are essential for candidate success on the job. The key example of the skills is to visually organize and define data relationships before building a database. Learning how to draw an ERD helps you think as a system designer, reduce future errors, and communicate your ideas clearly with developers or teammates. In this video, you'll learn how to create ERD diagram and communicate the data confidently to stakeholders. Coming up on online training for everyone. The best way to create entity relationship diagram in Visio is to search for the keyword database. Even though there is UML database notation template available, I prefer Crow's Food Database Notation because it provides more flexibility. In Crow's Food Database Notation, there are only six stencils available, but they provide tremendous flexibility and everything necessary to build an exceptional ERD diagram. The main purpose behind Entity Relationship Diagram is to provide documentation as well as to align everybody on the database model. ERD Diagram shows the relationships of entities stored in the database. It also shows logic and business rules associated with the data. And this information can be represented by logical data model, which is independent from database implementation. To show specific technical implementation for particular database, you typically use physical data model ERD diagram. If you do not need to describe data types, you use simple entity stencils. But if you do need data types, then you use entity with attribute. Data types are represented on the right hand side. Typically, they are exclusive, and you don't mix both types. For the purposes of my demo, I will be using entities without data types. I'm going to delete this entity, and you delete it by selecting it and using the delete button. We will be building online e-commerce store ERD diagram. To add the title to the diagram, you select the text and then type the title of the diagram. There are three main entities that are relevant for online e-commerce store diagram. The first relevant entity is customers. To change the current entity we have on the screen to customers, you click on the title and type the name. Next step is to assign attributes to the entity. You can do it by clicking on the attribute name and typing the attribute. But before we go ahead and do it, let's take a look at the key terms used in ERD diagrams. Entity could be presented on ERD diagram without data types. Most of the entities also require unique identifiers. This unique identifiers called primary key and foreign keys. Primary key is used on the entity itself to define uniqueness. Foreign keys are used to reference primary keys and typically used to define relationships. In addition to defining entities with their attributes and data types, you also need to define relationships between entities. These relationships accord cardinalities. Typically, customer's entity contains at least seven main attributes. You have customer ID, which uniquely identifies the customer. You also have customer email, password, name, and phone. You also have billing address and shipping address. One thing I'd like to point out is that some data modelers would like to just give primary key a name of ID. This way, name would be identical to all the IDs for all the entities that you create. This might be a good idea and it will provide some simplicity if you decide to follow the standard. After defining customers, we can now define orders. If orders entity is very similar to customers, you can just copy and paste it and then make all necessary modifications. Instead of doing that, I'm going to delete this entity and bring in brand new entity. Typically, order entity will also have unique identifier. It will also have order amount, shipping address, order email, order date and order status. To show all products customer placed on the order, we need to introduce new entity. It is typically called order details or order line item. Order line item will have unique ID, price, SKU, and quantity. Each order line item is linked to the product in our catalog. Let's introduce the product entity. Typically, product entity will have unique ID, SKU, product name, price, weight, product description, image or link to the image, and thumbnail or link to the thumbnail. As you have learned, to define successful ERD diagram, you need to define entities with the attributes and data types. You need to create unique identifiers in the form of primary and foreign keys, and you need to define relationships in the form of cardinality. Cardinality is typically defined as a line connecting two entities, and on both sides of the line you can have different symbols. 
there are at least four types of cardinalities available. And for simplicity, we put the symbol only on the right side of the line. Zero or more cardinality. One or more. One and only one cardinality. And zero or one cardinality. To define relationships, you need to use relationship stencil. You just drag it into the diagram and then connect two entities with relationship stencil. You can adjust locations of the entities to make sure the line is straight. To do that, you select the entity and you can use either mouse or keyboard. Using keyboard provides you with higher precision. A relationship between customers and orders is one to many. One customer can have many orders. To reflect this relationship, we need to assign one and only one on the customer side and one or more on the order side. To do this, you need to select the relationship line and do right mouse click and set begin symbol as one and only one on the customer side and send end symbol as one or more. So this way, one customer can have many orders and this relationship shows this cardinality. Now there's still something missing here and this something is unique ID of the customer and the particular order. Right now we only have order ID presented on the diagram. Now we need to represent customer ID for the particular order. To do that, we need to add an additional attribute on the orders table. You add additional attribute by selecting an existing attribute and clicking insert primary key after. The only difference, it's not going to be primary key and it's going to be foreign key. Because of that, we need to make couple adjustments. We need to select the attribute and do right click and set foreign key and uncheck primary key. We also need to rename this attribute by double clicking on the attribute and adding a new name, which would be customer ID. So now we have relationship between customer, where customer is represented by unique ID, and orders. Each order now can be linked back to the particular customer. There are a couple important rules related to primary key. Primary key is unique across the particular table. Primary key is also static. It never changes. And the third rule is primary key cannot be null. The value of primary key cannot be empty. In the similar way as we define relationship between customers and orders, we need to define relationship between orders and order line items. One order can have many order line items. And in a similar way, the relationship needs to be defined between order line items and products. One product can be on many line items, so there is one to many relationship between product and order line items. For both of these relationships, we need to define cardinality as well as primary foreign key relationships. Once you define all the relationships, you can rearrange the objects so they fit the available space much better, or as you see fit. One important consideration I'd like to point out is that the foreign key is outside of primary key. The separator line separates primary key and other attributes. Because foreign key is not part of the primary key, it should be outside of the primary key, so it should be below the line. This diagram already looks great, but you can make it look even better. Some people are very particular and would like to use specific color themes for their diagram. I have great news for these people. Microsoft Visio provides exceptional capabilities to improve design and make your Visio diagrams looks extremely professional. To change the design, you navigate to the Design tab and by default, and you have a lot of choices for the themes. You can select any available theme and as you navigate through the themes, it will change the design on the fly. So you can pick any design that you'd like. For example, I like this design because the dark blue contrasts with the red color for the logo. And both red and blue are primary color on the color wheel. Once you have selected design, you can choose variants for that particular design. It will leave fonts and design in place, but would allow you to select and refine the colors. If you need to, you can also change the background. You can choose background with the particular color, or you can choose background maybe as a grayish color with the specific attributes. In addition to changing background color, you can also consider adding borders and title. Not everything will match with your theme, but you can try different options that are available. Once you're happy with the design, you can use save as option and save your diagram as PDF file to share with your colleagues and team members. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You will also have an opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If this video was helpful, consider giving it a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll deliver to you in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.